After using my phone for a while, there's a ton of different info that is stored directly on the device. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you my process to transfer everything on my old phone to my new Samsung device, as well as how you transfer things like your Galaxy Buds or your Galaxy Watch. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So I have gone through this process quite a few different times, and so I wanted to show you all my tips and tricks when moving everything over to a new device. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're going to a Samsung phone. Here I have my new Samsung Galaxy Note 20, and if you don't have a Samsung phone, there are other methods to use, but today's method won't work. Um, you can check out the video up here to see some other options. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that both of these phones are charged up and that they have power so that we can wirelessly transfer everything. Next, I'm gonna go through and make sure all of my apps have a backup of their information. Now, most of the time, like my Google Home app, that's already backed up in my Google account, so I don't need to worry about that. But certain applications do need a backup. So like here, if I go to Samsung Health, I wanna make sure that my most recent data is backed up to the cloud. So I'm going to select Menu here, and then I'm going to select Settings and I'm going to select account and syncing, and here I'm going to select sync now. Now this is one that I mainly do just to make sure my exact step count for my watch has been backed up, and then I don't need to worry about that anymore. Now, there are so many applications, it's impossible to tell you which ones will and will not do that. So I would just recommend going through some of the most used. I had somebody reach out and said they use a crossword puzzle app, and um, sometimes if you have an account, you can back that up, other times it's not possible. So just go through your apps and see if there are any that you do need to back up manually. The next thing to do is download the Samsung Smart Switch application on our old phone. Now, if you have a Samsung phone, you can get it. If you have a non-Samsung Android phone, you should be able to get this. If you have an iPhone, there is no app available, but there are ways to transfer from your iPhone. One of them is you can download info from iCloud, or the other way is you can go and buy a OTG USB cable and you can plug your iPhone directly into this, into your new phone, and it can pull all of your information over and copy that to the new phone. I have a video all about how to do that up here. But now that we have Smart Switch installed on here, we're going to open this up. Next, I'm going to take the SIM card from my old phone and put it in my new phone. Now, depending on your carrier, this may be different, but I do recommend moving your SIM card over before you transfer all your information, just so that any new texts are going to come to this phone and so they're not stuck on your old phone. Now, before we remove our SIM card, we're actually going to go into the phone settings and we're going to go down here to device care. You're gonna go to storage and then here under advanced, we have the option to eject the SD card. So whenever you're removing your SD card, you want to unmount it there. And then here we can put this into the SIM card tray and pull that out. And now I'm going to take my SIM card. If you had a phone that supports micro SD card, you would wanna take this out and move it over or you have the option to copy everything to your new phone. But my new phone doesn't have it, so I'm just going to put this back in. And now before this phone is even turned on, I'm going to place the SIM card in there. So you just line it up just like that. And now we can place it in here. Now I'm going to boot up my new phone. Now most likely, if you purchase this at a carrier store, they have gone through the process of setting up your phone and adding the SIM card or a new SIM card to it with your phone number, but this is how you can do it all on your own. Now, if you did purchase this through the carrier, it probably skipped through all this. So here it's just going to run you through um, some of the terms and conditions of using a phone. Here it's going to ask to connect to Wi-Fi. I would highly recommend doing that just so that it's not using data from your data plan. Next, it's going to check for any updates. And now here it's asking us to copy apps and data over from our old phone. So this will transfer apps, photos, contacts, Google account, and more. So if you set this up brand new, I would recommend doing it this way. So here it says you do need your old device. You can use an Android or iPhone or even an iPad. Select next. And now it is going to download Smart Switch on this new device. Now, if you skip through all of this, you would just need to go to the Play Store and download Smart Switch on here, open the app, and it will take you to the same screen. 
And then here we have a few different options to transfer from an old Galaxy or Android phone or from an iPhone, iPad. Now, if you do iPhone, iPad, you would plug this in to your new phone and then you would get a lightning cable and plug it into your old iPhone. You also have the option to download from iCloud by selecting the link at the bottom of the page. But since we're not using an iPhone today, we don't need that. So here, if you're doing an Android phone, we're gonna select this and you can choose to do a cable. So here I can just use the cable that came with my Galaxy Note 20, or you can choose wireless. Now this will work wirelessly anywhere. You don't need to have a Wi-Fi network with internet. It's just a wireless connection between the two devices. But let's go ahead and choose the cable option because I feel like this is the fastest way to do it. So we're gonna select cable and in our new phone, we're gonna plug in. And since our old phone has USB-C, so this will work all the way back to the Galaxy S8s. And then here it is asking if you allow the new phone to copy information. So we're gonna select allow. And then here it's scanning through to find any data that it can pull over. So when plugging in the cable, make sure you plug it into the new device first. All right, and now they are connected together and here it is giving me the option to choose what I can bring over. So you will have most of these options no matter what way that you transfer. So here I can choose to pull over my calls and contacts. I can choose to pull over text messages, apps, settings, home screen, um, even a secure folder, images, videos, audio, documents, and files. So this is everything that was stored on the old phone. Now it is giving me a notice that it says there is not enough space. So deselect 14 gig of data. Now the Note 10 Plus has 256 gig of internal storage. And here I only have 128 gig of internal storage. So I will need to remove some of that info. And then down here, I wanna show you, it does give an option to copy over the SD card. So because I couldn't put the SD card in here, I can actually choose to copy over the images and videos and download them right to the internal storage on this phone. Now to help make this transfer easier, I can go through and deselect some of these options. So if I tap right here on messages, it asks, do you wanna transfer all of them just the last few years or a few months? And then for applications, I can come in here and choose to not transfer over certain applications. So here I could sort by data size and I could find some of the apps that I don't use as often and I could transfer those over. So now I can go through and uncheck the ones that I no longer want to have on my new phone. This is a great way to quickly clean up maybe some of those apps that you just don't use anymore and find the ones um, that aren't as important as they used to be and help it so that your new phone is not as cluttered. So I've unchecked pretty much all the apps I don't want to move over. I am getting a notice here on WhatsApp that says your chat history can't be restored. Back up your WhatsApp chat history on the sending device. So that's one of the apps where you need to make sure you go into it and back it up through the app as it can't copy over that information via smart switch. And that's pretty much the only one that I've seen here. And here it's giving you a little more info on how to do that on your old phone. All right, finally made it to the bottom of the list. So I'm going to select done. And now it's gonna take me back so I could go through and I could change settings. So here it's going to bring over the font size I like, Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth, quick panel, notifications, keyboard settings, and accessibility settings. And home screen, so it should copy the way my home screen looks like over here. So apps and widgets, lock screen wallpaper, home screen wallpaper, Samsung daily settings, and Samsung deck settings. And then here, any image and videos. Now I have five gig of images and 80 gig of videos. Now here under videos, you do have the option to uncheck certain albums. Maybe you don't want those albums to move over. You could uncheck those, but I actually already back up all my videos to Google Photos and Dropbox. So I'm not going to move any of those videos over. Now next I have audio. So I have a gig of audio on here that I could come through and uncheck those. And then here I have documents and files. So that's going to include just any documents you have in the My Files application that are going to be transferred over. And then last again, here you have the images and videos from the SD card. So that looks good. That's pretty much all the information that I want to have moved over to the new phone. So that's gonna take about 29.82 gigabytes and it's gonna take about 12 minutes. So when I'm ready, I'm just going to select transfer. So now it's working on copying all that information on the background. Next, it's asking if we want to copy over our new Google account. 
Now, if you didn't do this in the setup, you just need to go to the Google Play Store and it will ask you to sign in. So here I'm going to select that I want to copy over my Google account. Here it wants me to verify my identity with my fingerprint. And now it is copying over my account to the new phone. And here I need to sign in with my password. Now it is connecting and it is copying my stuff. So here you do have an option to keep the screen on. You don't have to, I just am for demo purposes. So you can see exactly what is happening behind the scenes. But when the transfer is going, you'll be able to lock your phones and let them go in the background. If you're using the wireless option, you just need to make sure that they are close together. And now it's gonna go through the rest of the options to make sure that um, you have everything set up the way you want to with your privacy and your location. Now next it's asking for us to add a pin code or something to protect our new phone. So let's just go ahead and add a pin code here. And now it's asking if I want to download some of these additional applications that Samsung wants to have downloaded. So I can go through and uncheck those, but for the most part, they would be things that I would use often. I don't use Microsoft Outlook, um, so I'm not gonna check that, and I'm not using Office on my phone, but I do use some of these other applications. So now I'm going to select OK. Next, it's asking if we want to sign into our Samsung account. It's a Samsung phone. I would recommend you do sign in. It will let you use things like Samsung Bixby, Samsung Pass that will store your passwords, Samsung Cloud, um, save your Samsung internet info. Now I do have a Samsung account I can just sign into. If you don't have one, you can just select continue with Google and then it will create a Samsung account that you sign into with your Google account. That's really nice that you only really have one account that will sign in um, to both of those. So I'm just gonna sign in with my account here and agree to the terms. And now it says that we are all done. So we're gonna select finish. And here it's brought us back to Smart Switch where it's gonna take 11 more minutes. Currently it's 25% done and here it shows what it is working on. So I'm gonna select keep screen on again and let this transfer go through. Now while that is going, you could use your phone. So I'm gonna select home and here it's gonna take you to the home screen. Right now it hasn't copied over any of that info. So it looks pretty bland. If you swipe up, you will see that some of the applications are starting to show up, but the best thing to do is just be patient and wait for the transfer to be complete. Here, when we pull down our notification tray, you'll see that it's giving you all these different notifications. Here, it's saying to activate the phone, I need to download my Google Fi app on this phone. And then here, it's showing the progress of downloading your stuff. So you can easily tap on there to go back to Smart Switch to see the progress. And now it is complete. So what that did is it copied everything from my old phone to the new phone. So everything is still here, it just duplicated it over here. Now it does mention that right now it's still organizing everything in the background. So right now the phone is not fully ready to use, but at this point we can disconnect our old phone and we no longer need to um, have it on. It's all copied over. So we're just going to select close here. Now it did give me a notice over here that I should back up my secure folder files so you can back those up directly to your Samsung account, but I'm not going to cover that in today's video. So now over here, like I said, it most likely hasn't organized your home screen yet. So we can pull this down and right here you can see it's organizing our stuff and right now it's updating some different applications and other things like that. So we can jump back in and it says it's gonna take nine more minutes to put everything where it belongs. It has now finished copying and organizing everything over. So if we select copied items, here it's gonna show us a list of all the things that it copied over. Here it says four apps were not copied. So we can open that up and it says it couldn't copy calendar, Chrome, beta, clock, contacts, but it does give me the option where I can just select download. It's gonna take me to the Play Store and I can quickly install those. So that's really cool. So next it's showing Samsung Notes that uh, our notes have been copied over. Now this is another application where you do wanna make sure that you make sure the sync is turned on. So I'm just going to select settings here and then there you can see the sync is set to on so that all my new notes will be backed up. And then last year it's saying backup WhatsApp. So if you did use WhatsApp, back it up on your old phone, restore it from your Google Drive over here on the new device. So I'm going to select done. And now you can see that my phone is very similar to my previous phone. So here you can see the wallpaper has transferred over, the widgets and apps are in pretty much the same place. Only a few different changes down here because it couldn't transfer over 
the Google Contacts app, I will need to add that back. Here we can open my fitness folder and here it shows a few of those applications. Some of them I did not choose to restore. And then some of them that are gray, they just have not finished downloading. So as what happened, it took the list of my apps and it's now pulling those down from the Play Store to re-download some of those and they are just not ready to uh, set up yet. So here you can see it's installing those applications but at least everything else is here. So now we can go through page by page. Here it looks like I need to download the calendar app and then add the widget there, but everything else is looking pretty good. Then we come over here again, more apps that it needs to download, but some of those are already available. And so there you can see pretty spot on. And then if we go to the last page here, I need to do some organizing, don't worry about it. And then here on the last page are those new applications that I just downloaded that it hasn't downloaded before. Now there is one main difference about these two right now is on this old phone, I have the new Android gestures to navigate. So if I wanna go to um, all the apps open, I swipe up, here you can see the apps. So if I'm in an app and I wanna go back, I swipe from the edge of the screen. Down here, if I want to go to my recent apps, I push here, I push home, or you have the back button. Now I prefer this new way. So I'm gonna to go to the settings, I'm gonna to go to display, and then I'm gonna go down here to navigation bar and I'm gonna change it to swipe gestures. Now, if you are using the S Pen, sometimes when you swipe from the edge of the screen, it will go back when you don't want it to, so you can turn off block gestures with S Pen. So there you go, now I have the new gestures and I'm gonna swipe up to go back home. So now it's pretty much aligned. And once I have all my applications, the new phone is ready to go. So now let's check to see if some of our info downloaded. Next, let's jump into the gallery. So in the gallery, I didn't transfer videos, but I transferred pictures. So it should match up pretty close together with some of these different things. So here you can see I had some videos that those did not transfer over. Now right here, all of these photos, those were the photos that I actually took on the SD card on this phone. So those did copy over. So I no longer have an SD card on here. Everything is stored on this one device and so I can go through and I can see that I have all those pictures. Now if we go to albums, those albums transferred over as well. So we have downloads, screenshots and some other information there. So a lot of albums do need to do some cleaning up. So next let's check out call history. So here under the phone app, under recents, all that transferred over. Next we have contacts. So I have all my contacts. Now I do also sync my contacts over Google. So those all copied over. It does say I have 1,587. I think I need to do some cleaning up. So we'll do that in another video. Next, let's check out messaging. So if I go into my apps here and under messages, here we have those messages that have been copied over. And if you did have picture messages, those should show up as well. Next, let's head into calendar. So calendar is actually stored with my Google account, but some of the calendars aren't showing up. So I just need to select menu and I need to come over here to my Google account and make sure that all the calendars I use are selected. So if they are, I'm good. If not, you may need to adjust that. And one thing I do wanna note here, it also transferred over my right on calendar that I had set up on my old Note 10 Plus. So that's cool that that synced over. Next, let's check out the My Files application. So here under My Files, um, it shows our different storage sizes. Here it shows there's no SD card on this phone, um, but you can see at the top here, some of my recent files, those are very similar. So it looks like it did a great job in transferring over those files as well. Now that we have verified all of our information has transferred over, we can now turn this phone off and just keep the data there. We have the option to factory reset it and trade it in or sell it. To do that, you're gonna to head to the settings here. You're going to go to general, you're gonna hit reset, and then you're going to select factory data reset, and then scroll down here and select reset, and it will ask you to sign in with your account. Now I am going to double check a few things to make sure everything is backed up before I do the factory reset, but that would be the process over there. So we're gonna move this out of the way because we no longer need it. Now the next thing we need to do is sign into the app accounts so that we can pull over the information from each different app. Now if it's a Samsung app or a Google app, most likely it has now already been signed in. 
But other applications, like let's say we go in here to my fitness pal to pull over my information, I will need to sign in to my account. So I can select sign in and I could just sign in right here and that's great. But I have a ton of different apps on here and I don't remember all the username and passwords. So I would recommend doing this. Go into your settings and we're gonna go down to general management. We're gonna go to language and input and then we're gonna go to autofill service. And here we're gonna go to autofill service and we can tap right here. So it's what an autofill service is, is it gives you an option to automatically back up your usernames and your passwords from all of your accounts to one location so that you can easily verify your identity on your new phone and then sign in. So here we have two different autofill services on the phone. We could use Google Backup or we could do Samsung Pass. So each of these it will store the backup on those different accounts. I use both of them. I think they both work great. The benefit of using Google is if you use Google Chrome on your computer, those passwords there will also transfer over here and back those up. Now you can also add service and there are these other different password management options to use. I've heard great things and tried LastPass as well. It's done a great job. I've heard things about Dashlane, one password. So a lot of different password vaults that will allow you to use this service. So for this video, I'm going to choose Google and select that I do trust this application. So now I'm gonna head back and I'm going to select the settings here. And now it is asking to verify that we want to use autofill with Google. And here we're gonna choose the account we want it to sync. So that is the correct account. And I've set up a passcode in my account so that you need to put this in for those passwords to download. All right, and now that has been set up. Now, before we can use our Google password, I also recommend going into Google Chrome and signing in. And here we are going to turn on sync there as well. So now we're going to head into an app where we need to sign in. So my fitness pal was a bad example. Let's go into the vSync application here. I'm gonna select login. Here it automatically popped up with my account information. There it put my username and my password. I select the login and it logs me right in. I no longer have to remember all of that information. Now, if you haven't set up Google Autofill or Samsung Pass Autofill, when you go in and sign into new accounts, it will pop up with a prompt and ask if you want to save that information to your account. So the next time you sign into that app on your phone or on a new phone, it will then already have that information saved. So then you'll just need to tap on it and select sign in. So now I'm gonna go through and sign into all of my applications and we'll move to the next step. Now that we've signed into all of our different accounts and all of our information is on the device, the next thing we're going to do is add our accessories. So here I have the Galaxy Buds Plus. I'm going to head into the Galaxy wearable application, select get started, and here you can choose your device. I have the Buds Plus, so I'm going to tap there and then we need to put these in pairing mode. So the first time it should automatically show up, but since they're not, is what I'm going to do is put these in my ear and hold down on each end for three seconds. So once you press on each earbud for three seconds, it should then put it into pairing mode. Sometimes you might have to put it in the case, close it and pop it back open. So we're gonna select Galaxy Buds Plus, and then it's asking to pair. And now they have paired together. And now we're going to allow our buds to access contacts and other things. And then here it's gonna run you through the setup tutorial of how to use these. If you want to know more info about the Beds Plus, check the video up here. And then I do wanna mention that here in the advanced controls, you do have the seamless earbud connection. So if you do have other Samsung devices, you can turn this on and once it's paired to those devices, it should seamlessly transfer to the other device when you are using that one. So that is how you can pair your Buds Plus. Now let's bring over my Galaxy Watch Active 2. So to do this, you're gonna go into the phone apps, select settings, and you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of the watch, and here you have connect to new phone. Now here it is giving us a notice that pretty much all downloaded watch faces, apps, and unsync Samsung Health data will be deleted. So make sure you go through Samsung Health like I showed you before, and uh, do the backup. And then you can also back up on your old phone. I've already done that, so I'm ready to go through and delete all this and reset it so it's ready to pair with our new phone. So now it's going to reset it and start it up just like normal. I'll show you how to do the backup once we get it paired to this new phone. 
Now, once our watch resets, it's taken us back to the very first starting page to get paired up. So now we're gonna head into the Galaxy wearable application. Here I have the Galaxy Watch Active 2, and it, now it is going to pair these together. And it pretty much acts like it's the first time that you've set this up. So we're going to select connect, choose that that is the correct code, and now it is installing the application that I need on my phone. And while we're waiting for that to pair, we can come in here and learn about some of the different features of the watch if you do not know how to use those. That will take a bit of time, but it finally said my watch was paired. And then here we're going to agree. And now it is going to link our watch. And if you had a backup, you can select check for backup. And then we're just going to set up the watch like new. And since I do have the LTE option, now it's asking for me to connect to mobile service. So I'm going to connect to previous network. And now the Galaxy Watch is finished setting up. So we can go through and start using it and it's gonna teach us how to do that. Now for the next time you do this, if you want it to have already backed up everything, just come in here under the account and backup option. And then we're going to select backup and restore. And here we're going to select backup data and then we can turn on auto backup. So that means it's automatically gonna make sure all of your um, Galaxy Watch data is automatically backed up to your account. Here we can manually select backup. It will go through and then backup everything. So next time you can just select restore and it will put everything back on your watch. All right, and now that is backed up. You do also have the option to come in here and restore the data from your watch if you weren't able to do it in the beginning. And it's also going to show other backups that you have as well. So now through this process, everything has been transferred over from our old phone. You can now see that all of the apps have been downloaded here. We've moved our Galaxy Buds Plus here. We've moved our Galaxy Watch over here. And then the last thing is to double check to make sure that your phone is activated. So here I'm using a Google Fi SIM card. It says my phone is not fully activated. I just need to open up the Google Fi app and it activates. Every carrier is going to be a bit different, but most likely if you have AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, your phone will automatically be activated once you turn it on with your SIM card inside. And with a test phone call and verifying that your phone number is active on your new phone, you have now completed moving everything over from your old phone to your new Samsung Galaxy device. Now, as you do use it more and more, you may need to tweak a few settings here and there, but that is the best way to get everything transferred over to the new phone. Now, the very last thing to do with your new device is to protect it with a case. I prefer to use the Pitaka cases. This is the mag case. It's a nice slim fit, has this really cool carbon fiber finish, keeps the phone looking great and feeling great. So protect it in as many ways as you can with the Note 20 here. I can also get a nice flat screen protector to cover the front, but that is everything you need to know about transferring your data. So if you have any further questions about this process, please let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see some more detailed videos about Smart Switch, you can check out the videos over here on the side or to learn more about the Buds Plus and the Galaxy Watch Active, check out the videos down here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.